just gonna Google that the Great Depression was in the 30s. Hello Phil Man fans and welcome back to Day of the Day Day with me, Phil Man, in which I explain what the Day of the Day is today. Happy National Button Day, everyone. It's hard to believe that National Button Day has rolled around again. National Button Day is observed every year on the 16th of November in an event marked by the National Button Society, because God only knows what we did before that. Without a button society to keep things in check, things just got out of hand. People would wear a cardigan with just one giant button that was so heavy it would just drag them down to a watery grave. But how did National Button Day start? Well, even during an event as depressing as the Great Depression, people didn't have enough money to warrant throwing themselves off a skyscraper, and as a result were driven to such extremities of boredom as they had to listen to the radio, an interminable experience at the best of times. But even then, they weren't so bored as to collect buttons. Until a woman named Gertrude called into a radio show always a bad sign. Which was Dave Ellman's Hobby Lobby, which was a radio show about hobbies, if you can imagine such a thing. And Gertrude called up and asked to talk about her button collection, and they let her! There's only one rule in radio, Gertrude, and that's no dead air! So you talking about buttons is technically not dead air, so it's one tiny, minuscule step above there being absolutely nothing on the radio is you talking about buttons, so we're gonna let you. It's the 30s after all. I mean, bear in mind that this is on the radio, so you can't even see it. And the only mildly good thing about buttons, except for the fact that they kind of keep your clothes covering your sordid body so we don't have to see it, is that they might be slightly shiny and as a result hold your attention for like one second. But even this extremely minuscule divertisement is taken away from you because you can't see it because it's on the radio and you're just talking about it. Oh, I, I must tune into the radio today, darling. I simply must tune in. I simply can't miss them talking about the functional aspects of something that I probably already have on my body. It makes me want to wear Velcro everything just to upset Gertrude. But what's even more depressing than that all these people tuned in to listen to a woman talk about buttons on the radio during the Great Depression, which was already quite depressing, that now you're going to spend your time listening to buttons... It's that people will listen to this, and then it sparked a craze for people collecting buttons. Something so easy, you might as well just be collecting dust. Wow. Is that button rare? Yes. What's so rare about it? I, I don't know, it's just a button. I, I just said it was rare because there's literally nothing to say about buttons, so you might as well just say it's rare. I even had a look at the National Button Society's website. You know what they have on their website? Worksheets. You know who else has worksheets? Substitute teachers. Congratulations, your entire hobby is aspiring in your free time to be as impactful as someone whose job it is to fill time for students who have to meet the minimum quotient of lessons in a school day. What strikes me as a particularly missed opportunity is this is not a day for celebrating all the good buttons in the world. You know, like the buttons that launch a nuclear warhead. That's a cool button! I mean, there's absolutely nothing about a 12 Trailon Weldon and Wile in Glitter Gold that compares to a button that can wipe out humanity with a single press. And then there's a button that you can press that smash a car into a tiny cube and then drop it at the foot of a really sad man who's really sad because his car has been crushed into a tiny cube. I mean, why... <laughs> why would I spend the whole day thinking about that? That's a great button! Or maybe they build up to that. You know, after a while, toggles and poppers stop being enough and they move on up the ranks to the big brass buttons and then they go on from there and they're pressing fire alarms and pressing the button that starts the automatic slaughter of chickens in a slaughterhouse until eventually they just stab four giant holes in themselves and sew themselves to the Statue of Liberty to be one of her freedom buttons. Do you want that? Is that the kind of dangerous thing you want to get involved with? Well, if so, join a button club, mate. Happy button day, you great big idiot.